I already know now what my job is to solve. That is what I sell. When we speak about feature benefit solutions, none of my features or benefits matter other than the solution to that fucking problem because that's what they've left. That's what they've tried. That's what didn't work. If you can solve that, they will purchase. They will buy. That is your only job for the rest of this conversation. Solve that fucking problem. What's up, everyone? Hope you're good. Uh, before we get stuck in today, I'm going to give you a quick little reminder. Do the likes, do the subscribes, and uh, you'll be. I think you're cool if you do it. Um, this this podcast is another interactive podcast, ultimately a audio book to a downloadable asset. We had some really good feedback on the previous one, the blueprint, the customer journey blueprint. If you want it, go get it. We'll put that in the description below. Uh, but we'll also put the sales process below as well. I haven't really come up with a name for it. So for now, it's going to stand as the eight Ps because that's what we refer to it. Uh, but I'm going to teach you how to sell today, a bit of a crash course. This is something that I talk about a lot in seminars and something about, something about sales that gets people a little bit rolled up, a little bit scared. Uh, and ultimately that, that, that makes sense because it's a, a large portion of your business and it makes a lot of sense to get really fucking good at it. The reason why people start to avoid it or get a little bit, uh, concerned when the word sales comes up is because it does have a, a a shit connotation in the world of fitness especially in the world of fitness and business because we are ultimately selling a, a selling a experience that should be healthy should be uh improving someone's life and we don't want to feel like the the seedy salesman that's trying to push something onto someone that they don't need now I, for somehow, I have exposed myself and uh, broadened my horizon into something that is not just fitness. Most of the businesses I work with are not just fitness anymore. So uh, I'm not going to just make this a, a fitness-specific example. We're going to dive into sales as an ethos, sales as an experience, uh, and purchase psychology too. So this, hopefully, will be pretty pretty applicable across the board. And um, yeah, I'm going to stop rambling, so let's get into it. The big thing with sales um, is we need to understand there is buying psychology and sales psychology. If all you ever focus on is sales psychology, all you're focusing on is yourself, you're selfish, and you're going to become that person that's pushy and uh, really trying to just drive that sale home, just trying to get that every last dollar. Uh, it never really does anything good for you, right? It might, like, if you get a sale, you're going to feel pretty good about it, but your cool off rate's going to be high, your churn rate's going to be high. Uh, so we want to try and make sure that we're selling authentically. We want to try and make sure that it is a logical decision and the customers feel good purchasing. So let's talk about the purchase psychology first. Uh, we don't often as a, as a society, we don't often purchase on, uh, on features. Now, 10 years ago, we may have. However, because we are so heavily marketed to, sold to everywhere we go, uh, both on, on phone media, out of home media, everywhere, we're so uh, immune to features. So we want to avoid the feature conversation when it comes to sales. You're not um, reverse engineer back a little bit. We're not even talking about promoting features. So you're in, like features are otherwise known as, especially these days in the, uh, the cuck world of business mentoring of inclusions. Fuck your inclusions. Everyone expects what you include, right? Unless you're doing something that's out of the ordinary, completely separate and completely different, your inclusions are expected. So those, so those features don't really matter. We want to focus on uh, benefits, but even better, the next level up would be solutions. The psychology to this is people are so immune. People are so, uh, uh, for lack of a term, they, don't, they just don't give a fuck about what your features are because uh, they should be standardized, okay? Especially in most industries, people know what they expect and they have some sort of idea of what you should offer, okay? To, to leverage this purchasing psychology, we need to go down the other road. We need to understand that because people are so aware and so immune, they're, they're looking for a point of difference. They're looking for something that's not commoditized, that's not comparable. Uh, they're going to try their damn best to compare, but we want to try and make sure that it stands out a little bit so that it feels a bit more like something they need, okay? Once we get that right, we can level this up and understand that their psychology is geared more towards their own selfish endeavors and how your product helps them. What does it do? What does it actually uh, change? And what can it improve in their lives? So, this is where benefits come in. So the layer up would be, for example, a feature 24-7 access. The, the benefit, all right, one, 24-7 access, fucking lie, but you sleep, yeah? Um, the, the, the benefit above that would be ongoing consistent support, right? If we position it that way, now it has some sort of meaning to the individual. If we go one layer above, though, 
It's solution focused. It's we're not talk, tying to a feature at all. We're tying to the actual problem at hand so that we have something that is positionable and uh, appropriate and emotional for the person that's purchasing. Example being something like um, instead of the consistent support, it's never you never have to worry about trying to figure out whether you're making the right decision because I will make it for you. That is a solution, okay? The whole conversation around uh, really good authentic sales is predicated on understanding the psychology of the purchase um, of the purchaser, the person actually paying you the money. If you get that right, you uh, you stack the deck in your favor. So let's try and do that from the beginning. Let's try and make sure that like uh, we're not in a position of uphill battle uh, only and screaming only and exclusively uh, screaming like features from the from the rooftop. So you get this, you get this, you get this. Shut up. Just tell people how you can help them. Okay you'll find a lot more success in that. So let's talk about the actual, the sales process in itself. I'm going to go through some real world examples here. I'll give some context because all the information is in the book. All the information is in the downloadable asset. As as I said, you can go get that. Um, Leave a comment below if you have any questions on it. My team will get back to you. We'll go through it. But um, ultimately, the eight Ps, okay? Eight Ps is this thing, like this thing has revolutionized the way that we sell uh, both in my company in any companies that I've got fingers in, and then obviously clients' companies as well, it just allows us to become far more predictable. It starts with person. We need to know who this person is, who they are, what they do, how it impacts their ability to get the thing they are trying to do. In fitness, it would be, hey, I already know who you are, so I'm going to say, hey, Pat, how are you? It's like, how's your day been? Good. Small rapport. We don't need to spend 20 minutes building rapport. If you can't do this fast, you're just like, you're going to be fighting a very fucking long battle because getting someone... Uh, pre-frame getting someone that's the next step getting to that stage it needs to happen quick so this conversation flows easy way to do this is like just in that initial conversation like hey man how you going i already know your name so i don't need to ask who you are right what do you do what is your job okay great and how does that impact your ability so for now example how does that impact your ability to get to the gym and you know focus on your health we've already taken that conversation from you know just surface level rapport to okay we're here to talk about about a thing great we're on topic now all we need to do there is then just as quickly as possible transition into pre-frame. When I say quick, we still need to be their friend. We need to be comfortable because if you're uncomfortable, so will they be. Like if you're not comfortable here, the whole process is not going to work, okay? In this process though, in this first little portion of person, we can also do one really critical thing and that's character profiling. We live in a world where people say don't judge. I say fuck that because the world will judge you, okay? And if you aren't prepared to make judgments and assumptions, better word, um, you could be in a position where you're unable to sell someone, feeling pushy or selling in the wrong way because you're you're not open to making some assumptions that will save you some time in the in the future. Uh, like I said, the world will judge you. You may as well use it to your advantage and and make some assumptions about those judgments uh, and use them in your benefit. For example, if you get on a call with someone, you're over this Zoom, um, and they're sitting across from you, they're in a bright fluoro trades top you know this person is probably going to be in an industry where direct language is needed they're fast they're not overly uh you know emotional or at least not forthcoming with emotion because they probably are in an industry where they don't have time to sit there in their emotional day okay making that assumption straight out the gates we can already assume down the road when you try and dig for some pain they're going to be a bit resistant so you're going to have to find a way to get around that Character profiling will save you a lot of time. Uh, just be prepared to do it and just lean into whatever biases you have because it will allow you to sell better. When we push into pre-frame, this is our second P. Pre-frame is about taking control of the conversation and setting the standard for what's about to happen. So Pat, what we're going to do over the next 45 minutes is figure out exactly what your goals are, where you want to go, how I can help and what the next steps are. I've got roughly 40, I've got roughly 45 minutes. I'm booked back to back. So do you mind if we jump straight in? Does that sound fair? We qualify that we're here for a period of time. We get clear on it. And hey, I'm the fucking captain now. Okay. I'm taking charge. That way you're in power. You're in position to actually ask the right questions. From there, we want to get straight into why they're on this call. We want to dive straight into pain. Why are you here? What do you need? And we're going to dig through some shit to get the real answer. Know when you find it. You have to ask uh, a number of questions here to, to get to the real thing. And don't, don't uh, confuse pain and problem. Problem is the next thing, but pain is just trying to get to the emotional why of why they need what they need. They've booked a call for a reason. Um, People don't book calls and 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 get on these uh, conversations if they don't have a problem worth solving. 
that's always backed up by some pain. Now, if we've character profiled and know that this person's going to be a little bit resistant to emotional exposure or, or forthcoming with their real pain, maybe they're giving you the surface level answers, we need to assume the opposite, okay? When we position this and it's like, if we're getting someone that's resistant, the easiest way to, con- to combat this is to assume the opposite. If someone's on a call with you and if you're selling muscle growth, fat loss, anything fitness, and they're like, you're sitting there going, okay, cool, well, what, what's the main goal here? And they're giving you the, oh, I just want to get a little bit better. Okay, and they're being resistant. We need to go down the other road. Okay, cool. You said you want to get a little bit better. Does that mean you're not in the best position now? I'm assuming the opposite. I'm putting it in a negative tone and you can't be afraid to add some negativity to your to your process because negativity cuts through the bullshit and it's going to get a direct answer. So assume the opposite and only if resistant, we use that negativity as a clutch, as a hook, as something to grab onto. Their option there is to say yes or no and then you can dig deeper until you find that real pain. After you've done that, uh, that pain digging, that dirt mining to find the gold, you're gonna, your, job, your one job is to restate their problem to them very simply, very uh, concise and clear, but make it direct. We can't sit there and go, so your main problem is this, 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 and this. Oh, is, that, is that right? No. So it sounds like the main problem, Pat, is you're not confident with your decisions in food and how you move in the gym. Does that sound right? We want to make it a sentence, maximum, just a straight sentence, get a phrase, uh, and our job here is to just speak all of their pain back to them in one concise problem, having them feeling understood, having them feeling ready that you can help them and know that you can help them. Okay. Once you have that, they're going to, your, your only, your only option here is to figure out, okay, well, how long has that been a problem? We want to quantify time. So sounds like this is the main problem. Does that sound right? They say, yes. You go, okay. How long has that been an issue? We're now quantifying. When did this become a problem? Uh, maybe the last two years. Uh, okay, cool. And what have you what got it? What have you tried in the last two years? I've tried A, I've tried B, I've tried C. Got it. Have you tried anything else? The last two years, you tried three times. Oh, uh, I also tried D, E, and F. Okay, got it. And why all of those things? All of those things. Like right now, you're still in this position. Why do you feel they didn't work? When you do this, you're you're meeting them where they are. It's, it's not our job as a salesperson to tell them they're wrong. They've come to you with a problem that they believe is true, that they believe is the, the, the reason. Uh, we just need to meet them where they are. Why do you believe that those things haven't worked? They've got their own bias, their own uh, predetermined models of why those things hadn't worked for them in the past. If we look at like a social media uh, marketing agency, uh, if I was running a marketing agency and I'm w- working with someone, they've said, oh, like I tried another agency, I tried uh, Facebook ads and I tried this. Okay, cool. Why did none of those things work for you? Uh, the agency was too expensive. I also didn't really understand meta ads and I was a little bit lost in creating content. Okay. I already know now what my job is to solve. That is what I sell. When we speak about feature benefit solutions, none of my features or benefits matter other than the solution to that fucking problem because that's what they've left. That's what they've tried. That's what didn't work. If you can solve that, they will purchase. They will buy. That is your only job for the rest of this conversation. Solve that fucking problem. And that is your anchor. So, if we look at the world of fitness, okay, I've tried keto, I've tried a couple coaches, I've tried this. Okay, why did those things not work for you? I didn't get enough support. Great, I'm selling you support now. That's exactly what I sell. We talk about that later, but if you don't get really, really clear on what they've tried in the past and why it didn't work, you're, you're selling a service that is the same, right? And I know that sounds like a good thing, but the service itself is the same, but the, the way you sell it should not be the same for every person that you sit in front of. It should be based on their problems, providing solutions easily, simply, and streamlined. Make it simple. Once you have that answer, again, that is your anchor. That is something you can come back to, and it's something that you can sell really, really easy. Now we just need to start selling the journey, the process, the possibility. This is a really easy way to bring back some control, take it away from that emotion, and get some clear uh, outlines of what you need to do. So look, uh, based on the possibility of like, let's talk about this happening. Like we're in this place now where uh, you're, we can solve that. That's something that you've you've gone through. That's something that was really hard. I, I can kind of un, kind of uh, can't even understand how you're still giving this another shot, but you are. So let's talk about what that looks like. What's the possibility of this actually working out? What do you feel when you get there? Like let's talk weight loss. Okay, cool. You drop 20 kilos, but what else changes? How do I know I've done a great job to make sure that I'm accountable to this process? Because sure, the weight on the scale to move, that's really easy. But what are you going to feel when you hit 20 kilos less? Is this, this, this. What dress size are you going to fit in? This, this. We get really clear and concise on what those things are. And it gets them thinking about the outcome rather than the sacrifice 
of all the hard shit they have to go through. Again, if we use like SMMA as a, as an example. Okay, cool. And let's talk about, you get that extra 20,000 followers. What else does, what changes there? Like, is it an inquiry rate go up or like, what's the main thing to keep me accountable? Cause it's not just followers. That's easy. Oh, it's an increase of this. It's a row as of A, B, C. There's so many other things that they can quantify as specifics that you can measure against that allow you to show them you can uh, you have confidence in the service and that you can get them those things. Um, <clears throat> from there, we just want to outline the steps. We want to give them a path. That is our next P. What is the path? And how do we how do we get here? Um, we just outline all their goals. Like, okay, best plan for us to move forward through this is these three steps. Or I've got previous clients that went through these three steps and these were the results. Really simple path. Now we just devise a plan. All right, how do we get there? What is the actual specifics to them? What are the solutions? All right, these are the solutions I, I propose for this problem. Let's talk about how this will work. Let's talk about how this work. This isn't your time to fucking coach them though. This is to talk about the plan that you have that you're happy to send over to them as a, as a, as a next step, okay? Get really clear on it, get simple. Uh, if you're in a business where it like relies on text or coaching, <clears throat> this is where like in the... The possibility path or plan, you can start doing a screen share, show your service, actually show them how it works uh, as it pertains to their problem. No, just don't just start showing them features like you get check-ins, you get this. No, show them the thing that matters to them. You get a way higher converting uh, percentage. From there, we need a pitch. We just need to pitch the price. Uh, we do this from a scale of 1 to 10. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being, hey, Reese's beard is still fuzzy and looks weird. And 10, this is a next logical step for us or for you. Where do you sit? Using personal attack as the one, as the base, human psychology, they're going to want to move away from the offense. And 10, as logic, we're taking this whole sales conversation away from being a, a, an emotional ploy back to, hey, does this make sense for you? Because it needs to. Then we just need to explain away concerns, get them to a 10, say the fucking price, shut your mouth, drink your cup, and shush. Let them choose. Let them actually decide. And once you have the clear decision, like, yes, this is good for me or no, it isn't. If it's a yes, we want to walk them through their emotional process. So great, man. Like, Pratt, what are you feeling at the moment? Are you excited, concerned, nervous? Like talk them through their logical feelings that they are likely to feel so you can reduce the churn and reduce the cool off. And if it's a no, we just need to explain away the concerns, tackle the objections. All the ways to handle those objections are in the book below. That's the pod. That's how to sell. Here's your crash course. Thank you. Like, subscribe, do the things. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.